Welcome to Baseline Scientific and the October night sky. We start with our usual look at our neighbour, the Moon, and then move on to the planets, followed by a look at the meteor showers for October. So, over to Paul for the Moon. Hello and welcome to the October Moon. As usual, we'll start with the phases and then we'll have a look at the lunar occultations that can be observed during this month. The month starts with a waxing crescent. First quarter on the 7th. Full moon on the 14th. Last quarter on the 21st. And we'll finish the month with a new moon on the 28th of October. A lunar occultation occurs when the moon passes in front of another body, blocking its view for a short time. This other body can be almost anything – stars, planets, even galaxies. Despite being very easy to observe, these events can tell us a great deal, both about the object and the moon itself. To be useful, a great deal of care must be taken when observing, as the timings, the object magnitude and the exact observing position must all be known. Observations can be made as the object disappears behind the moon and then reappears later as the moon has moved round. So let's see which occultations can be observed in October. On the evening of the 8th, the 6th magnitude star, 4 Capricorn, will be occulted at 19.52 UT, or about 10 to 9. This is about half an hour after the astronomical twilight, so should be a good late evening observation to start the month with. Observations can be made when the star reappears from behind the moon. This type of occultation is more difficult to observe as it takes some experience and knowledge of the local star field to get accurate timings. On the 17th, a 5.5 magnitude star will do this. G Taurus will reappear from behind the, the waning Gibbous moon at 23.44 UT. It will be well into the night but being three days after full moon, glare could still be a problem. If you want more information, please see our website, which has a list of the stars discussed here. Carla. Thanks, Paul. Now let's look at the planets for October. As throughout September, Mercury will be very difficult to observe at the start of the month. It reaches inferior conjunction on the 6th of October and will then become a morning object. As the month progresses, it will become easier to view, reaching greatest western elongation on the 22nd. By the 31st, it will rise in Virgo at about 6.30, still over one hour before the sun. However, do not wait until the sun rises before you stop observing. Stop well before that. Venus is an evening object throughout October. It starts the month low in the sky at sunset and will be difficult to observe. However, it will gradually move higher in the sky and set later in the evening. By the end of the month, it will be a magnitude of minus 3.8 and over 7 degrees above the horizon at sunset. Mars is lost in the glare of the evening sun and cannot be observed. 
Jupiter is in Sagittarius at a magnitude of minus 2. Despite the darkening nights, it is now low on the horizon. If you're going to try and observe it, you need to be out early in the night. Setting at just after 11 on the 1st, it will set at about 9.20 on the last day of October. At the start of the month, Saturn will rise a couple of hours before the Sun. It should be possible to see it easily as it's a magnitude of 1.3. If you want to image the planet, it's best to wait until later in the month when it will be well placed in Leo in the morning sky. October is really the first opportunity to start observing Saturn again. However, the rings are becoming edge-on, so it won't be as spectacular as we are perhaps used to seeing. Uranus, at a magnitude of 5.9, will be easily visible in a small telescope. Don't expect to see any detail, but you should be able to make out a small blue disk. It will be more than 30 degrees above the horizon as it passes the meridian, so makes a good observing target for the early part of the night. But it will set at about 3 o'clock by the end of the month. Neptune is in Capricorn at a magnitude of 7.8. At the start of October, it will pass the meridian 23 degrees above the horizon at about 10 to 10. By the end of the month, it will do this at just after 8. As the year draws to a close, Neptune will set earlier in the evening, only remaining visible thanks to the dark winter nights. October has only one meter shower, the Orionids. This can normally be seen from the 16th till the 27th, with the peak being on the 20th. The rate is expected to be about 25 per hour. However, the moon will hinder observations of the fainter meteors. Orion can be seen rising in the east early on the 20th, and it's from here that the meteors will appear to come. Of course, if you can't see any meteors, you can always just enjoy the welcome return of Orion to the winter skies. That's it for this month. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join us next month for the November night sky. With the dark winter nights, there's plenty to see. So from Paul and myself, goodbye.